Hey guys, I wanted to give a quick update on what we've been working on. Big update, a lot of shift in thinking and architecture and UI and especially AI. Um, so let's jump in. So biggest shift is definitely a feeling that we're not creating one AI, we're creating multiple AIs here. Um, it's not just uh, like a Siri or a Lisa or something like that. We're actually creating multiple AIs. and. And then th this has kind of been resonating with me as to what the purpose of the program is, is you're teaching them, the AIs, to interact with us, the humans, and teaching us, uh, the humans, to interact with them, the, the AIs. Um, that's that's the whole par purpose of the program. And anything that falls within that feature set is, is fair game. So um, big thing is we ripped up the, the, the project and gutted it. We um, had been doing it in... Uh, PyKit or PyQt, um, all Python with a Python UI and EXE, and uh, I, that that just wasn't a scalable thing. The architecture was like four, or five years old, and uh, and and we wanted to use uh, Electron, so we've kind of gutted it. This is the architecture for the new app. Um, we're using Electron, and Electron can then interface with uh, Python. We're then using some React. Um, all that stuff, and, and, and it's all server-based there. So, cool. You guys can look at this and pause it and tell me what you think of that front end or back end there. But let's jump into the new changes. So, new, 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 new changes is I've kind of defined uh, Learn, Teach, and Explore as, as our top tab. Uh, you then have this this roller. Oh, yeah, this looks totally different. Yes, it does. It looks a lot more snazzy. Like, I was really just about proving the concept before. And once I proved that concept, it kind of freed me up to get like, all right, how do I make this thing look pretty and uh, for really work for people? So uh, when a student is learning, they will be in a Pong project, uh, learning Pong. And then the steps will pop up just like this. Here's your Pong project, you're on the step, here's the description, you can turn off and on voice, here's the, uh, the, the thing you're supposed to be looking for. You'll be able to reply to it and give that teacher feedback. Um, but most importantly, the big change is no you know, arrows, no left and right. Now what happens is when you finish a, uh, a step, it collapses down and goes down underneath you. So you can then, kind of go to these other steps uh, and get to them. Um, and we also have uh, nested steps where these are like optional. Uh, if you know how to make a ball, you can s skip over them, but if you need more information, you can get to them. Um, so uh, it's, it's so now you'll just have these this main step fall down and you'll have a new step pop up here. So a big change in how we're, we're doing learning uh, there. I think this will be way more effective. Um, cool. Next up, another big change in how we're going to author. Uh, where before uh, it was, it, it was good, but I realized you can actually add uh, a, your. It's basically programming that you're doing. So I wanted to give somebody the easiest way to program. So now, uh, this is the new UI for authoring a lesson step. So we have uh, you basically have an event, you have an action. And that's about it. So let's go through it. Uh, you can title your step, and then the event is could be a number of different things with this pull down. It could be on uh, CV find, like it's found the computer vision spot on the screen. Sweet, the event has happened. Or it can be gaze detected on the CV, uh, uh, or it can be mouse roll over or mouse click on the CV. It could be any one of those things. And then these are the images that you can add to it. And that's a, uh, you know, where before it was just one image. Now I'm, I've, I've, after testing, I just know we're gonna need more than one because buttons have, uh, you know, a rollover state or a selected state or something that will just mess up the computer vision. So you need this or this or this or this or this. And so when you click on one of these things, you then define uh, what it is. So I've clicked on it, I've popped this up, it kind of grays out your, your thing. You can say it's this or this, and you can make these ors, but you can also make ands. So you can have two things need to be on the screen in two separate places for this event to actually happen. And then I also threw an ignore in there. I, f I feel like the CV is gonna get tripped up sometimes and you can just like 
put an ignore in there to fix it. But this, uh, these ores will be really great for adapting as a UI grows. Um, you'll be able to uh, fix uh, and, and add different UI themes very easily. So once this event happens on a CV find or something like that, you then do an action. You can speak text or display text or play sound effect or you know any number of different actions you can think of. And then you can further, this is contextual, so if I do speak text, it'll then give me um, you know text to add in there. And then you can also define what how the next step gets triggered. So if I click on the CV, if my gaze is detected, all those things. So, uh, and then very much the same way as the other one, once I uh, finish this and I collapse it, it then rolls down and a new kind of one pops up for me. So uh, there you go. I can also come in and review my comments. So students have been, like, let's say this is a, a lesson that's been being used by students. I can go through and look at the comments on this thing and be like, oh, I need to fix up this lesson a bit more. So uh, kind of a cool open-ended thing there. All right. Okay, let's get into this bad boy. So this is, a, uh, let me scoot this over and let's just talk about this. So this is um, all that AI talk we did about the uh, AI template matching. I think that was the phrasing you used, uh, Klaus. I, th I, th I thought a lot about it. Thought a lot about it and um, I realized that um, trying to have some all-knowing Oracle AI is a mistake and it takes out the human element. Uh, I, I, I feel like I was talk to teachers and talk to people and, and it's a hard sell and I think it was the wrong way to do it. So what I'm really thinking about it is, is uh, the AI is an extension, is an extension of that teacher. Um, and that extension of you, that virtual you, lives on and on and on. So let's look at this case study real fast. So this is a gay, this is like, say I'm a student here. Uh, my name's not Nick, because <laughs> I have Nick in here. But say, or I'm sorry, sorry, hold on, let's backtrack. Say I'm a teacher and Gabe L is my student. And Gabe, I just got the notification that he completed Pong. Cool, Gabe completed Pong. The AI is going to look for this and give its best recommendations to me as to what to advise to Gabe. And these are two advices. And this advice was given a long time ago. It might not have even been given by me. It was given by Nick M. This one was given by Garrett P. But the AI thinks that this is the appropriate thing to do after this. Because again, the, the big thing, thing that I'm trying to solve for is I know I can teach lessons. I know I can teach lessons, but the real trick with being a teacher is to knowing what the next lesson is. What comes next? Like, and, and when math and science, those things are very defined on what comes next. But when, after you teach Pong, what do you do next? There's, there's not a lot there. So what I'm hoping is to crowdsource uh, and, and have the AI kind of internally grow a curriculum track um, that is crowdsourced. And so th the AI would look for this event and it would give me uh, this, this, these, these advices. And as a teacher, I could look at this and say, you know what, that is a good thing for Gabe to do. I'm gonna agree with that. And you can see that other teachers that are also mentoring Gabe have also agreed with this. Hence, reinforcing the learning algorithm that this is the correct thing to do after Paul. Um, and so then there's other stuff like you should learn Unreal. It's like, no, 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 disagree. And five other teachers have said no to that. Um, so th this is so the AI is not building a Siri or something. It's trying to just make an extension of Nick M and a Garrett P. Uh, and it's trying to still like these people might not even be at Game Gen anymore. These users might not even be using the program anymore. But if their advice was good, it keeps following them. So I can take their advice, but say the, the, the market has changed, say the, uh, the, 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 there's something new that a student needs to learn, I can come in and insert a new um, bit of advice and send that to the student instead. So this is where I'd say, I want this to be a command or a question. Um, I'm still working this out, but I really, I'll show you guys why I have this in a second. But I say, I want to make this a command, do Lunar Lander and tell him why. Um, 
because then what happens is the students, so this is now the student view over here. So this was the teacher view. Now we're going to the student view. And the student themselves have said, hey, I finished a lesson. This is the lesson. And this is the advice for my teachers. And this advice for my teachers, um, and remember, they gave the advice to me over here. This is what they say that I should do. I can now agree or disagree. So, you know, liking and unliking, I have no interest in that. That's social media. But I want to make, make a productive network where people agree on tasks that, yes, that's something I should do. And people agree that's something you should do. Uh, I disagree, that's something I should do. And so what happens is if Gabe uh, agrees to this, it then kind of goes in his student file and uh, he can refer back to it. Other teachers that are mentoring can refer back to and know that these are the things that he should be doing. And he, when he's wondering what he should do, he can refer back to this. So um, that's the idea I have, I think, going forward with the AI of how that's gonna gonna play out. And, and with this, we can do some pretty great things. I mean, I think we can have timers in there and insert lessons and uh, all the stuff that I had in that mock-up of, of everything. I think we can do all those things using this system um, for people. So uh, anyway, there we go. Oh, I forgot to show this. Uh, so this, Remember how I said that we are creating AIs, like multiples? So I'm thinking about, so Blender is this open source uh, software for 3D. It's the most popular kind of 3D package in the world right now uh, for open source. And uh, the idea is that you kind of find a container AI and then you put lessons inside of it. So you teach Blender about itself. Um, this is how you add a light. This is how you you know, make a, a spaceship, all those things. And uh, when you do this, so, so, so where I had them just as lessons before, I think you need to associate these lessons with a root um, AI. And then this is training the AI what it looks. So if it ever finds itself on the screen, it can kind of say, hey, yeah, I, uh, this is, I have lessons underneath me. Cool, uh, I, sorry, I forgot that a little out of order. Okay. Next up, uh, I've just been showing you guys how the, how the AI is really seeing the screen and interpreting advice, but I've got something cool. So I really think a big part of this, this AI is also being able to see the student. So this is a test one of my programmers uh, did up. We haven't integrated with the tool yet, but this is basically, I think a good teacher needs to observe their student and uh, look for just those subtleties. I've always done that. And so this is an AI that watches the student very, don't worry, I have a way to make it not Orwellian, um, but uh, it watches them and can tell if they're focused, not focused, sad, neutral face, all those things. And what I hope to do with this, you can see the output right here of, of, of focused and, and uh, neutral and whatnot, um, is, uh, is let the teacher know when the student's not paying attention or when the student uh, is not really engaged in the lesson and also let the student know that. I think that is such a, a, a powerful thing. Uh, and we can do all, I mean, I don't think uh, I've even begun to scrape the surface on all the ways we can use this. Uh, so let me show you guys. So just having a test is, is not enough. I've really had to think hard about how to have an interface for this. So the interface looks something like this. Um, the interface is I'm editing me. I'm, I'm editing me and I'm going to teach the AI what I look like when I'm focused, slightly focused and not focused. Because again, we're dealing with many people with disabilities, many people that look many different ways. And I don't think we can train one model that allows for it to know these things. But if we allow the student to train that um, and show them the benefits of having that in their learning, which I do believe I can do, 
Um, I, th I, th I think that's the way. So you train on what you look like focused. You can train it on your emotions, happy, neutral set. You can even train it on your agreements for yes and no. Um, I think this could be something cool where if the computer asks you questions, you can just nod uh, or put a thumb up of a yes or, or shake your head for no. Um, Again, we deal with people that are in wheelchairs, things like that, uh, that can't use the keyboards that well. And, and um, I, I really wanna focus on making a, a teacher that can teach anybody. So um, cool, uh, but then you'll notice these pluses and not pluses. So these, like this is very sensitive information. Uh, I, I realize that, uh, I, I know that I'm gonna get pushback on that. So what I want to be able to do is be able to have on a on a higher level and even lower levels, the ability to share people. Like, I, yes, I wanna share this teacher on my concentration level. Um, I want to share these people on my emotion levels. I do not wanna share them on my sad level. If I'm ever sad, I don't want them knowing it. You know, so you can choose which emotions you're showing um, to, the, to, 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 to people. And you could only pick, I just wanna show it to the, computer anonymously. Um, so some, some interesting, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around this uh, and I, th I think it could be really, really good. So anyway, uh, those are the big things. Um, you know, we, we've got, uh, you know, new architecture, new way to think about AIs, uh, new way to do um, learning, new way to define uh, these steps, and uh, then I think a really interesting way to um, give advice, um, you know, using AI. Uh, and then finally, you know, we've got this really cool thing with, uh, with, with, with being able to, to detect emotions and concentration. So there you guys go. Uh, I wanted to give you guys an update. If you see anything that interests you or if you, uh, you know, just have some advice, please let me know. Uh, I, 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 I know you guys are so busy uh, and uh, you guys have so many projects, but you guys are the smartest people I know. And uh, I, I, I'm definitely alone on a, on a raft on this thing. And, uh, and just these videos are good for me to kind of organize my thoughts um, with. And, but uh, again, if you guys see a, a place where you're like, oh, you should do this dummy. Um, cool, tell me. <laughs> All right, thank you guys.